from convicted murderer to reality star, fathering 13 children and joining the search for Brian Laundrie, Dog the Bounty Hunter has built himself quite a legacy. Dwayne Chapman, better known as Dog the Bounty Hunter, has made no secret of the fact that he's walked both sides of the law from an early age. In his autobiography, You Can Run But You Can't Hide, he even detailed his time in a motorcycle gang as a teen. As a teenager, Chapman had a run-in with a gang called The Devil's Disciples. He recounted that the conversation started when an older biker confronted him, but the teenage Chapman managed to stand his ground. Apparently, they formed a close bond thereafter, for by 1968, the biker had also become his legal guardian. On their way to the deep southwest, the gang fought another gang along the way. After a falling out with the group, Chapman claims he talked his way back in by questioning the authority of the sergeant-at-arms. This brazen move paid off for the young gang member, as he reports that his companions laughed and awarded him full membership. However, he very quickly lost interest in being a biker, so he kicked his mentor in the chest and left the gang. It wasn't a clean break, though, and Chapman said he was already too deep into the lifestyle to leave it behind with his patches. Before he was Dog the Bounty Hunter, he was Dog the Petty Criminal. In his memoir, Dwayne Chapman wrote about one particular night that would haunt him for the rest of his days. September 15, 1976. Against his wife's wishes, Chapman went out that night. While partying with some friends, someone in Dog's party suggested they rob a man named Jerry Lee Oliver. He initially protested, but when members of his party promised they'd score a lot of cannabis as a result of the crime, they headed to Oliver's house. Chapman recalled that he and Oliver were good friends, and knowing he'd be recognized, Chapman stayed in the car. Shortly after the robbery commenced, the plan went terribly wrong. Chapman heard a gunshot, and his buddies came running out of the house. Oliver died later that night. Chapman said that his companions took him home. He called an ambulance, and then he confessed everything to his wife. While speaking to his wife, his phone was still off the hook, and the 911 operator heard his confession. If you're there when he steals a candy bar, you're just as guilty. <laughs> and, and in Texas, was that was you. the law. He was ultimately charged, convicted, and sentenced to five years in the Huntsville State Penitentiary. Reflecting on his time in prison, Chapman wrote, I got the education of a lifetime in Huntsville. It prepared me to confront any situation. It was a time when every choice had a sudden and often horrible end result. In his autobiography, Dwayne Chapman tells the story of how he became Dog the Bounty Hunter. Unsurprisingly, his unconventional career had an even more unconventional start. After getting out of jail and meeting the woman who would ultimately become his next wife, Chapman wrote that he had turned his life around and found his niche, selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. Before long, his first wife began demanding that he pay her child support, which he refused. Eventually, Chapman wound up in court, where a judge made it quite clear that he needed to contribute to the support of his children. He said that he didn't have the money, and that's when the judge made him an offer he couldn't refuse. While he'd been in jail, he had played a part in the recapture of another inmate. That led the judge to offer a deal. If he found a particular individual that the court was looking for, the bounty would go toward paying the child support he owed. He found the guy, and in his autobiography, reflected that the judge was so impressed that he put him in touch with a bail bondsman. Chapman views these events as a life-changing transaction, writing, I was completely convinced defending the law was a better choice. Dog the Bounty Hunter turned into a television star after gaining attention for his involvement in the recapture of Andrew Lester. Lester had fled the U.S. from Mexico in the wake of a rape trial, and when he was apprehended by the Bounty Hunter, Chapman and his assistants were arrested as well. The reason for Chapman's arrest was that bounty hunting is viewed a little differently in Mexico. As a police spokesperson explained to The Guardian, in our country, it is not allowed to go around just abducting people like that. While in custody, Chapman told News Nation he continued making the best of the situation. The immigration officers came every morning to get me at the cell and brought me down to their office, and I trained them how to hunt. The initial charges were dropped, with a judge ruling that prosecutors had dropped the ball when it came to getting to court in a timely fashion. That verdict was appealed, and in 2006, it was widely reported that Chapman had been arrested in Hawaii in relation to the charges. Even more charges were filed, and according to the Chicago Tribune, Chapman posted bail on charges of deprivation of liberty. 
The possibility of extradition hung over him until 2007, at which point Mexico canceled the warrants for his arrest. He was freed from the threat of extradition and was even free to visit Mexico again. In 2007, Dog the Bounty Hunter briefly disappeared from television lineups amid a massive controversy. National Enquirer published a recording in which Dwayne Chapman repeatedly used a racial slur while speaking with his son. He, of course, ended up back on television and told CNN he wholeheartedly believed that the use of racist words did not make him a racist. He explained, Not one black person to this day has walked up to me and said anything bad. It's all been the whites. He went on to explain that, given his track record on both sides of the law, his use of controversial language shouldn't come as a particular surprise to the public. However, the controversy did not end there. In 2021, his family made headlines again when his daughter, Bonnie, claimed she hadn't been invited to her father's wedding to Francie Frayne because she supported the Black Lives Matter movement. Bonnie elaborated that her father was also homophobic and unfaithful to his previous wife, Beth. Chapman addressed the accusations in an interview with Entertainment Tonight, saying, I thought I had a pass in the black tribe to use it, kind of like Eminem. To say a racist name doesn't qualify to make you a racist. Despite this assertion, ET host Kevin Frazier pushed back against that claim. If you use that word, it, if you okay. use that word and you use it in your regular everyday life, it makes you a racist. Bobby Brown is a familiar face for devoted fans of Dog the Bounty Hunter, and it turns out that behind the scenes, he was shrouded in some serious conflict. In 2011, Brown sued the networks and companies responsible for the show, saying that he was grossly underpaid for his contribution to the series. While he claimed that he did up to 50 hours of behind-the-scenes legwork for each episode he was in, he was only paid a total of $6,000. On top of that, he claimed that he had been promised a spot as a regular cast member, and that promise never materialized. According to The Hollywood Reporter, charges in the lawsuit included breach of contract and promises, as well as misappropriation of his publicity rights. It's unclear just what happened with the lawsuit, but it seems that Chapman and Brown have made up somewhat since Brown's allegations first came to light. When Beth Chapman passed away in 2019, Brown issued his condolences in an interview with KRDO, saying, It's hard for me to talk about it right now, but you cannot prepare for when it really happens. Her life was built on faith and family first, and that's the way she left this world. In addition, Brown also tweeted in support of Chapman's books and other series, further cementing the fact that the on-screen collaborators are, at least, amicable. Dwayne Chapman currently has 13 children, many of whom have been featured on Dog the Bounty Hunter in some way. A few of his older sons, Dwayne Lee and Leland, have important roles on the show, while others like Lisa Ray, Tucker Deeb, Cecily, and Bonnie have made guest appearances. Others, such as Gary and Wesley, have opted to stay out of the limelight completely, and others still grew up without knowing their father at all. On June 26, 2023, the fourth anniversary of Beth Chapman's death, the bounty hunter posted a surprising message on Instagram. While first acknowledging the tragic loss he experienced on that date, he also posted a picture of his son, John. In the post's caption, Dwayne wrote that June 26 was also John's birthday, and that he and John had only recently met for the first time. In his memoir, Dwayne also wrote about getting a phone call from the mother of one of his former girlfriends, informing him he had a son named Christopher, who had been put into foster care at a young age, after his mother died by suicide. Dwayne met Christopher at the county jail where he was serving time for a hate crime. Chapman wrote that he was able to use his pull with authorities to drastically reduce his son's sentence. When the New York Times spoke with Dwayne Chapman in 2020, he said that he had been responsible for the capture of 10,000 fugitives. In 2007, he told ABC that his 27-year career had seen him net 6,000 fugitives. For anyone counting, those numbers add up to about one capture every day and a half. With such a physically and mentally arduous line of work, it's no surprise that Dog might be dealing with some medical issues. In a 2020 meeting, fellow TV star Dr. Oz confirmed this, saying that Chapman was courting danger by living such an intense life. The loss of his wife, Beth, has only added to the struggle. Not long after her death, Dwayne Chapman was diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism, a potentially life-threatening condition where blood clots get stuck in the arteries of the lungs. Chapman blamed testosterone supplements for the condition, 
But other causes include long-haul travel, smoking, obesity, and extended periods of inactivity. Oz was so concerned about his health that he flew out to have a heart-to-heart -heart with the bounty hunter. Oz told the Times that he was somewhat perplexed as to whether or not Chapman actually wanted to live a healthy lifestyle, even suggesting that Dwayne may have wanted to follow Beth in death. While the conversation was a bit ethereal, it did get results. Chapman paid more attention to his diet and cut back to smoking two packs a day. I'm the best I've ever been. Look out, beware a dog. In the latter half of 2021, headlines were pretty much dominated by the case of the missing Gabby Petito and the search for her fiancé, Brian Laundrie. Unsurprisingly, Dwayne Chapman joined the search when it was announced that Laundrie was unaccounted for, and not everyone was thrilled with his assistance. Former NYPD detective chief and COO of a security services company, Kevin Harrington, didn't pull any punches when he shared his thoughts on Chapman with the New York Post, saying, Nobody in real law enforcement respects people in fake law enforcement. Meanwhile, other law enforcement experts had other concerns. According to former FBI agent Matthew Young, there was a good chance that whatever Chapman was doing could interfere with the ongoing search by law enforcement. Even as other bounty hunters scoffed at his involvement, Chapman's daughter, Cecily, called the whole thing just a publicity stunt. He also made waves by giving a strange interview with The Sun, where he hypothesized about Petito's death. While insisting that the still-missing Laundry had certainly murdered Petito, he also claimed that Laundry's parents were involved in the murder. His thoughts on prosecution for the crime were equally far-fetched, saying, I don't think a jury would put a man to death if he went to keep his woman quiet and he suffocated her, but woe unto him if he did anything else. Dwayne Chapman may have overhauled his life from gang member and criminal to a bounty hunter, but that's not the only sharp turn his life has taken. Fans of the show will know that he's vocal about being a man of God, and in an interview with the Christian Post, he explained that the hardships he's faced have only strengthened his belief. Chapman said he started praying for another wife after the death of Beth, and that God delivered one to him in the form of Francie Frayne. According to Coastal Breeze News, the couple even relocated to Florida to be closer to their church of choice and to establish a society to help trafficked women. Not all of his preaching has been so New Testament inspired, though. According to Deadline, in 2022, he brought some Old Testament fire and brimstone to an evangelical Christian conference called Opening the Heavens. In it, he questioned how God could allow the election of Joe Biden. After telling a tangentially related parable, his statements got even more divisive. He explained, Hitler committed suicide. And do you know why? Because he was caught. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to catch these cheaters. And I'm not saying with my tongue or my mouth that he's going to commit suicide, but you never know. Needless to say, not everyone was pleased with his comments.